Grandma didn't know why it was good, but she knew it was good. She intuited, eat an apple a day, it keeps the doctor away. But chemically, or in scientifically speaking, there's something in apple juice with the hydrogen bond in there that is really healthy for us, uh, for our digestion internal. I get up at uh, shortly after six o'clock, go downstairs, and I make a glass of hot organic apple cider, one tablespoon of organic apple cider in uh, warm water, because remember, don't put organic apple cider in hot water, it kills the enzymes. So I fill the glass half full with half with hot water, then I fill it the rest of the way full with cold water, so now it's sort of lukewarm. I add a tablespoon of or organic apple cider and, and a tablespoon of maple syrup or honey, or whatever sweetener, and I drink that on an empty stomach. And then I go upstairs and I take a shower, and when I come out of the shower, I do certain, certain physical exercises. I don't use toothpaste. I make my own MMS, which is, uh, sodium chloride solution. I, I have my toothbrush soaked in uh, hydrogen peroxide overnight. So I brush my teeth with hydrogen peroxide, then I spit it out, wash my mouth out. Then I soak my uh, toothbrush with MMS, and I brush my teeth with the MMS, but then I swallow it because it's good. You want to internalize the MMS. And during the day, I will take every hour or every two hours, I will take three drops of MMS and three drops of uh, citric acid, mix the two together, wait for a minute, then I fill the little glass up with water and I drink it. And it's, it's wonderful stuff. It'll, it'll neutralize and kill everything that, that isn't good inside your body. <laughs> it's amazing stuff. I have breakfast, I have three tablespoons of uh, quinoa that I've made. I add three tablespoons of hemp hearts, mix the quinoa and the hemp hearts. Then I um, add tablespoon of maple syrup into it. Then I pour organic 3% milk. I don't like skim milk particularly. I like, you know, uh, so organic whole milk. 3%, I think they call it. And then I add a half a cup of blueberries, and that's my breakfast. And that'll last me till 11, 30, 12, unless for some reason I may get hungry and I may grab a piece of rye bread and a piece of cheese, and that'll keep me going. And lunch varies, you know. I, I will make myself steamed vegetables. I'll take a a steamer, take a pot, put a steamer in there, put in some cabbage, put in some, I chop some broccoli in half, uh, asparagus if I have any, uh, if there's an onion lying around, I'll chop some onion in there, some green beans, whatever vegetables is around. I'll steam, a, I'll mix a bowl of steamed vegetables and let it steam for 10 minutes and, and then I put some soya sauce on it and generally that's what I have for lunch. I love steamed vegetables for lunch. Uh, I don't go looking for meat but I will eat meat. You know, like I had some p good pork chops here that Lynn made uh, the other day but I don't go looking for meat. I don't require it uh, I, but I don't decline it if it's there. I just don't. This, I can live on vegetables if I have to. I'm not fussy that way. I'm, I'm not a teetotaler. I won't eat meat and, or I won't eat anything that has a face on it or whatever, you know, each to his own. For dinner, quite often, uh, I, I get the Swiss dark rye bread, European bread that I'm used to from when I lived in Bavaria. And it's very hard to duplicate that bread the way they make it in the old country. But I found a, a baker out of Abbotsford, a, must be German, who bakes European bread, and he bakes double Swiss baked, it's about this thick, this long, chopped in half, and it tastes 
just like the bread that I used to eat in Bavaria when I was a kid. I just love it, you know, and I'm able to get it locally here. It's delivered from Abbotsford. So I eat that and I will slice myself some Irish cheese. There's a Dublin white Irish cheese that I love or cheddar cheese or Cambuzola. I love Cambuzola cheese. I love cheese of all sorts. And I'll, I'll have three or four pieces of bread with cheese on it and that'll be my dinner. Whatever is around, you know, and all of these things make me feel good. I, I have good digestion, you know, if I ever ate something that doesn't agree with me. If it really doesn't agree with me, the first thing I reach for is um, activated charcoal. Everyone should have a bottle of activated charcoal at home. It's cheap and it's a, a wonderful thing to put into your stomach when you're feeling off and you don't know what it is. You're feeling you ate something or the bacteria got hold of, they're winning the battle against you or something, take some activated charcoal and it attracts anything that's harmful and poisonous to it and you expel it. It is wonderful. If you think you had food poisoning, <laughs> put two or three pills of activated charcoal in you and watch what happens. It's, you'll feel better in, in, in a half an hour, in an hour. It's a simple trick I learned a long time ago. Don't take any pharmaceuticals, you know. Later on at night, I will try to eat at least one apple a day, like grandmother said. One apple a day keeps the doctor away. There's something about apple and apple juice that has to do with hydrogen, and that's good for the body. Grandma didn't know why it was good, but she knew it was good. She intuited, eat an apple a day, it keeps the doctor away. But chemically, or in Scientifically speaking, there's something in apple juice with the hydrogen bond in there that is really healthy for us, uh, for our digestion internal. And now we're discovering in the Ellis water how important the hydrogen bond is. It makes all the difference in the world. Hydrogen is so, so important. We're just beginning to open up um, that avenue where people are becoming uh, reading and researching more and realizing that there's much more to water than what we think. We don't know the half of water. Water is a mysterious, it's a, it, we can't live without water, but we don't know everything about water. There's much we can still discover about water. There's even a fourth state of water that in my research I've come across now too. And then I usually go to bed I try to do some research or try to catch up on my emails, which is impossible. I'm 500 emails behind. I tried to go to bed early last night, like go to bed at 10.30, and then I get a phone call from a fella 50 miles away from here, Ken. We got to talking and it was quarter after 12 by the time I said, I got to go to bed. I, I, I meant to go to bed at at 10.30 and here it is quarter after 12 and because I get up at six. So anyway, sometimes I get more, a little more sleep. If I get six hours a day, I'm doing fine. But I try to get six hours, but uh, generally that's usually my routine. I don't have any set patterns particularly, but certain things I follow. And I take my Bach every day, six to eight pills. I, th I wouldn't be without it. It's bio superfood, blue green algae and chlorella, two of those. I did research on that about 14 years ago and I said, oh, I gotta be taking that. And I think it allows me to have the energy and the clarity of mind that, that I do have most of the time, although sometimes I think I'm getting quite forgetful. <laughs> and then I take my um, magnesium that I make myself. I have a mouthful of that in the morning and a mouthful in the evening. It's easy to make, you just buy the crystals and mix it up. And I take my organic sulfur. Not every day I take colloidal silver, but when I think about it, I, I will take a mouthful of colloidal silver and just swish it around my mouth. It's an antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral. I've been making that stuff for well over 15 years. Like I'm working on OGs today, but I prefer sunny weather if possible because I'm I'm making OGs and I, I when I put the final surface on there I need hot sunlight to dry them and it takes hours for it to dry and then I, if I put them out let's say at noon then by six seven eight o'clock in the evening I take them 
and I put them inside and still leave them to harden overnight. And if everything goes well, they should be hard enough for me the next morning that I can file them and finish them. Unless they, sometimes they get sticky for some reason over which I have no control. <laughs> but then nothing gets lost. I can reuse them in one form or another. You, you can't destroy an OG. There's no such thing. It can be used in, in so many different ways. And as I told you yesterday, when all else fails and I can't work with it, then I, I make a contribution to the landfill. It gets dumped in the landfill and the birds love it there. The energy that comes off, off the landfill from the organ generators, there's eagles there, there's seagulls, there's all kinds of birds going through the, the landfill and before they cover it with dirt. So, yeah, that's the wonderful thing about an orgone generator. No matter what state or condition it's in, it is always working in a positive way, never in a negative way. It's a wonderful thing. I like working with it because it energizes me. It, 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 it really does something. That's why I encourage people to start making their own orgone generators because it will change their lives their attitude, their, they become more positive, they'll come happier, they'll forget about some of the troubles they have because that energy goes into you and it transforms you, it transmutes you. Just like crystals will transmute negative energy into good positive energy, the energy of orgone generators and you making it and your intentions going into it, it's sort of a blessing. It's a really positive, wonderful, spiritual sort of thing. I encourage everyone to, uh, from kids to older people, to get into making them. And forget about making them fancy, and you know, that takes, that takes a while for you to get the hang of, to do that. You don't have to make them fancy, you can just make a Dixie cup with some metals and crystals in there and watch how it will change you for, for, for better. Just the energies, we're, we're dealing with really good energies here and they will affect people differently. I'm affected by it. I, I love making them. I never get tired. I've been making them for so many years now and I'm always looking towards what can I create today that's different from what I've done before. It's never the same thing, although some things are always the same. You have to go through the basics, but you're always, you're always thinking about new and creative ways. How can I do this differently? You, you're solving problems like I showed you yesterday. You know, it's a you, it's wonderful to, and when you can solve the problem, just put it aside. You'll be able to get back to it when you get an inspiration and the problem will be solved for you. That's the nice thing. You don't have to solve the problem just because you want to right now and you can't. Just be patient, put it aside, go on and do something else. And maybe in a week or two or in a month or two or sometimes in a year, you'll get an inspiration. Ah, now I know how to do that. Ooh.